Alameda County Coliseum, December 21, 1974, the way it was. Oakland has just kicked off to Miami, 89, Nat Moore swinging to his left. Down the left sideline, he's got open space. The speed to the fastest man by far on the Miami team goes untouched, 89 yards, touchdown. Quickly, Miami leads by a score of seven to nothing. But Oakland, a powerhouse, high-scoring team with the pinpoint precision passing of Kenny Stabler, strikes back in the second quarter. Stabler to Charlie Smith, the score tied at 7-7. Seven seven. Moving ahead to the third quarter, and with Miami leading 10-7, Stabler strikes again. In the corner to Boletnikov, 25, incredible catch, that made it 14-10 Oakland. But Bob Greasy was not to be denied either. Throwing long to Paul Warfield, touchdown, extra point block, and so Miami led 16-14. Once again, Stabler going to work. His favorite target, Cliff Branch, the speedster out of Colorado has it, apparently down, untouched, too late by Henry Stuckey, and Branch goes downfield, touchdown, and so Oakland takes a 21-16 lead. The Dolphins worry to see Fernandez's face, but the Dolphins, a tremendous football team, fighting back, and now... Benny Malone, number 32, will not be denied. He first past one tackle on another, and still another goes in for the touchdown, and so Miami takes the lead again, 26 to 21. But Oakland, with Kenny Stabler hitting Boletnikov, first for 18, then for 20 yards, famous for his two-minute drill attack, brings the Raiders downfield, hits Frank Pitts, an incredible catch there, five-yard gain, the clock says 35 seconds, a frantically worried John Shula. Now, almost the last play of the game, going down, Stabler waffles the ball in the air, somehow Clarence Davis, 28, catches it, the Oakland Raiders win 28-26, they go at it again today.
perhaps the most unheralded coach in the league, widely characterized as a mere puppet for, in effect, the general manager and part owner, Al Davis. But in truth, nothing of the sort. A determined leader who should get credit when the team wins and who should be criticized if he deserves it when the team loses. Thus, the two coaches. Now, for some further analysis, let's bring in the gift, Frank Gifford, and let him talk about Miami on the offense. Well, Howard, we mentioned some of the injuries that possibly will hurt the Miami Dolphins. They have some mighty fine football players, too. They're coming off their best preseason ever, at least in terms of rushing. Now, that seems odd because Larry, Larry Zonka is gone. But Norm Boulash, Don Nottingham, Murphy Morris, Benny Malone, they picked up the slack. But even though they're talking like they can run the football, you still get the feeling that quarterback Bob Greasy is going to have to have his best year, and he's going to have to throw the ball for Miami to once again win this division. Well, that means it's time for Spanky Cat. Spanky, how would you defend Bob Greasy? Well, Univac, I think he summed it up. They, they, they've been running the ball in the preseason because they know that they have to run the ball in order to maintain that kind of offense that they've had with Zonka. As far as the, the, the uh, league opener is concerned, I don't know. I don't know if they can run against Oakland. Oakland knows that. They, they're not uh, scared of uh, Zonka in the middle, so I think they'll loosen up, and they're, they're going to think that uh, Greasy's going to throw the ball more. I think Greasy's going to have to throw the ball more, Frank. Now, what about Oakland and Kenny Stapler? In my estimation, Kenny Stabler, well, if he isn't the best quarterback in football, he's certainly approaching it. They say you have to spend five years to be the top quarterback. He's really only been a starter for two years, and he is super. He has some great receivers. We saw them in the highlights of the playoff game, Branch and Bolitnikoff. Stabler, if you give him a little time, he will just burn the daylights out of you. He is something else. All right, Spanky, how do you defense Kenny Stabler? Well, how do you defense an open offensive football team that's terrific? I don't know. Uh, Miami's playing with injuries. I think they'll go to a blitzing uh, defense. That usually kind of compensates for a lack of uh, uh, defensive personnel, and I think they'll go strictly uh, to a blitzing game tonight. We saw it in the preseason game where they were rushing their uh, safeties and the little guys scouting through the line, so they may go into a real blitzing situation. Thank you, gentlemen. Coming up, Oakland against Miami in the Orange Bowl. We'll be back in just a minute. professional broadcasters know that solid state equipment is reliable. The XL100 solid state television set reflects that reliability. That was one TV expert. What about others? What color TV do more of these TV experts own? RCA. Right down the line. Think about it. The RCA XL100 means reliability to me. If it isn't RCA, it isn't XL100. scoring play by that New York Life Insurance team. Let's see the instant replay. Look at those New York Life pros blocking out Jake's money problems. <laughs> Stopping his retirement worries. And there he is, reaching his goal. Jake's got financial security. New York Life made it happen. Where the name of the game is life, there's New York Life. This display symbolizes the hundreds of batteries and the full range of power systems made by EverReady. And of them all, this is our best all-purpose power system, the EverReady Alkaline Power Cell. Now that doesn't mean it's right for everyone, but for a calculator, electronic flash, things that really put a strain on a battery, you can't find a longer-lasting power system than EverReady Alkaline Power Cells. EverReady wants you to know. Last year, I introduced you to Mike McMahon, a Boy Scout whose great moment came when he rescued his family from their burning house. Through your one pledge to United Way, you made millions of great moments possible for Scouts across the nation, and they'd like to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you. This is Bob Greasy, the Miami Dolphin, saying, thanks to you, it works for all of us. Thank you. over Miami. A brilliant moon shining here in Miami. We have had scattered showers as it shines down on a jam-packed orange bowl. Where tonight the Miami Dolphins kick their 1975 season off against the Oakland Raiders. And there it is. It was not sold out on Friday. However, it is tonight. 80,000 people on hand to watch these two teams who last met last December when they were in the AFC playoff division.
together, won by Oakland in the final 26 seconds. And Howard, we talked about that game, but there are still many who say it was one of the finest ever. It had been billboarded, as you know, Frank, as the real Super Bowl game. It didn't turn out that way. The only one who reckoned with Pittsburgh was you, since you picked the Steelers all the way to win it all. But certainly it was one of the finest games within memory in the National Football League. And if we can have anything like that tonight, as I said earlier, we'll be in good shape for our opening. Dropping deep, Freddie Solomon, number 86 for Miami, back there along with Mercury Morris. Kicking off for Oakland is Ray Guy, and we're underway in the Orange Bowl. It will be Mercury Morris who lets it bounce, and it bounds out of bounds. Going out of bounds, it will go back and will be kicked once again from the 30-yard line. Don Shula, an incredible record here at Miami. As Howard mentioned at the top of the show, he is going to have a tremendous job for him. He's lost a lot of players other than Zonka Kick and Warfield. Nick Bonacani is not there anymore. Manny Fernandes, the great safety man. Dick Anderson out for the season. Bob Hines is out. There's John Madden. He too has injury problems. Yeah, but he's slimmed down an awful lot. I don't think he's worried about his injuries. He's worried about his waistline. I don't think he's going to get your clothing award this year, Alex. No, he's still uh, looking pretty dapper, yeah. John Madden. Great he, looks, he looks bad in expensive clothes, that guy. Does. <laughs> <laughs> and a much more brilliant coach than you might suspect. He has done a great job with the Raiders, along with managing general partner Al Davis. That's true, and a very engaging guy with a great sense of humor. All right, Kip, we're about ready to go and now. You're looking at Mercury Morris. A couple of years ago, he was definitely the deep threat for the Miami Dolphins. He's coming off a bad year. And Ray Guy rips one again. This time, he puts it through the end zone. It'll be a touchback, a big kick by Ray Guy. So the Miami Dolphins will begin operation from their own 20-yard line. They will have at quarterback Bob Grazy. Bob Grazy has taken the Dolphins to the playoffs for five straight years. He's in there with setbacks Mercury Morris, number 22, and Don Nottingham, number 36. The wide receivers, Nat Moore, he's the deep threat, number 89, and Howard Twilley. Howard Twilley has caught one pass in three seasons. Hampered by injuries, Jim Mandich is the tight end. He is the big threat, as I see it, for the Dolphins tonight. The offensive line, a veteran one, anchored by Jim Langer at center. The first play from scrimmage. This is Morris, dipping to the outside, and he could, oh, and just tripped up over the 35, going down at the 39, and had he been able to get around that corner, he was gone. He has great speed, a 19-yard pickup, first down. Mercury Morris only gained 214 yards last year after coming off big 1,000-yard years in 73 and 72, hampered by injuries, problem at times because he felt he was mistreated a little bit. But he says he's ready to play. He had a great preseason with over 200 yards. First down again for Miami. Now at the 39-yard line. Coming towards you, Howard Twilley. Morris again over the right side. Gets out for a couple of yards over the 40 to the 41-yard line. No, notice, fellas, a lot of the players are wearing sneakers because it's wet down there. Alex, what's that well, run for? Well, that run for has been together a long time. It's Tony Klein, 84, and, of course, the University of Mars himself, Otis Sistrick, number 60. Art Toms has been around for a long time, number 80. And Horace Jones, I think, is kind of one of the un underrated ball players on that ball club, number 82. Watch him move. Galvin Carver's in there, too, Alex, and he, of course, is replacing Art Toms, the regular, at the right defensive tackle. And Greasy again, now facing a second down and eight. Just in the way from the Orange Bowl in Miami. Well, just over the 41 and getting the call. It's Nottingham, he fumbles. And battling for the ball and coming up with it is number 84, Tony Klein. And a Miami Dolphin was lying right alongside of the ball. He did not see it. And Oakland gets their first turnover, something that they major in during the course of the season. We were talking about, you were talking about Calvin Cover, the guy who just replaced uh, Art Toms has got a pulled muscle. He just did a good job up front. He straightened the center up, and he caused that fumble. And no one could block him, and he was just a, really a big bull of strength in there. All right, note as Oakland goes on the offense with great field position, the center will be number 50, Dave Dalby, the first time in the history of the Oakland Raiders, Jim Otto. Now the business manager will not be the Oakland center. Quarterback Ken Stabler with 
setbacks, number 34, Harold Hart, and Marv Hubbard, the big fullback, number 44. Hubbard gets the call, finds a hole on the right side, makes a couple of more strictly on his own inside the 35 to the 36, a gain of four. The wide receivers are Fred Bolitnikoff. He's number 25. What a deadly receiver he is. Over 450 receptions in his career. Cliff Branch, the great speedster on the left side. 60 receptions last year, 13 touchdowns. Bob Moore is the tight end, but he'll alternate a lot with Dave Casper. And there is the offensive line. Dave Dalby at center, anchoring that line, as Howard mentioned, replacing Jim Otto, who has been there up until tonight. Every game, open play. Second down and six. Stabler goes to Blitnikoff, is complete. Blitnikoff had what appeared to be the first down. He stepped back and Bob Matheson laid a hit on, and he could have lost the first. Of course, the, the Dolphins front four has guys that have been hanging together for a long time. Vern Den Herter, who I can't pronounce his name, and if I could, I'd, you know, I'd use him once in a while. He's number 83. Randy Crowder, number 74. Don Reese, 76. And of course, Phil Stanfield, who I think uh, game in, game out, he's probably their best defensive lineman, number 84. Don Chula on the sidelines. Into the lineup for the Oakland Raiders. Their second tight end on a third down, perhaps less than a yard. Ball resting just inside the 29 of Miami. Dave Casper's in there, number 87, along with Bob Moore. Stabler, the quarterback, coming off a great year. Hubbard gets the call, and Hubbard, the big fullback, 235 pounds of him, gets the first down. He gets the first down, and Alex, you said those guys in the defensive line have been together a long time, which is usually true, but not tonight because of the absence of Fernandez and Hines. Instead, Don Reese and Randy Crowder, two young ones are in there. They may actually better the Miami pass rush, but the defense against the rush is something else. Again, the Miami linebackers, veterans, Mike Colin, moved to the middle. 57-59, Bill Swift. The first and 10 for Oakland at the 26-yard line of Miami. Stabler dropping and looking. Gets a tremendous rush. Steps away from the guard with number 74, Randy Crowder. But it was enough to force a six-yard loss for Oakland. I, Stabler with a tremendous rush. I had just mentioned that the two young ones might actually better the Miami pass rush, and there was an evidence. 74 Crowder getting in first. And Don Reese, the number one draft choice a year ago, finishing up the job. But again, their ability to defense the run will have to be seen against the powerhouse ground game of the Raiders tonight. Kip? Second down. Second down and 16. The ball at the 32-yard line of Miami. Politikoff, Branch, both to the left side, but the goal ball goes to Hubbard. And Miami is fired up as John is in there now, a rookie from Oregon State. Well, he's had an interesting background, Giffa. Andrews played Canadian football. He played in the World Football League, came into Miami, a free agent. He had originally been drafted by Detroit, which gave up on him. Shula liked what he had, and he's going to get a lot of work tonight. And he comes out now as the pass is anticipated by Miami. Miami. In comes Jarris White. He's number 41. They'll go into their prevent defense. Third down and 14. The ball just over the 30-yard line. Stabler opens up his tight end. Firing, and it's complete to Cliff French. Cliff French, the uh, little 5'11", 170-pounder out of Colorado, gives Oakland a clutch first down. And, of course, that's a trademark of Kenny Stabler, as all NFL fans know. He's a pinpoint precisionist with the pass. He's a patient quarterback. He doesn't often go to the bomb, though his arm has become sufficiently strong for him to do it if he wants to. Oakland operates in the passing game primarily in a 15 to 17 yard range, which was the case just then. Kenny Stabler, 57% average last year. He threw 26 touchdowns. He just completed a key third down pass to Branch for the first down. Now he hands off to Banizak. Banizak over the right side. Pete Banizak, the veteran, 10 years out of the University of Miami. Banizak is still with the team because he's good on the special teams. He represents the problem presented by the 43 rather than 47-man roster. Number 23, Charlie Smith, no longer with the club, was a better runner, but wasn't strong enough to play on the special team. Net result, Banasek got a life. Same thing happened in the case of Morris Bradshaw, who's with the team, instead of Frank Pitt, because Bradshaw is good in the special team. Yep. On second down and 12. 
Hagler with the time. Gets it away to the big tight end, Bob Moore. Moore, very close to the first down. It'll depend where they mark the ball. A 12-yard pickup. And referee Jim Tunney tells us it's just short. 8-19 remaining in the first quarter from the Orange Bowl of Miami. No score. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Frankie Alex <laughs> Harris as we open our regular season with a beauty. Oakland and Miami and what classic they've had. Short yardage. The two tight ends are in. Casper and Moore for Oakland. Hubbard, as you would suspect, gets the call, gets the first down to the two-yard line, leaping over the blocks of Dave Dalby, George Beeler, and Gene Upshaw. Of course, you know, you're wondering about Mike Cole and who has to fill in for the, one of the greatest all-time middle linebackers. Uh, what's his name, Univac? Nick Bonacani. Uh, what number is he? 85. Thank Not you, to be seen for the rest of the year because of the 43-man rule. He'd be ready to play in three weeks otherwise, but Shula had to fill the gap. Credit Banazak with that first down for Oakland. Hubbard is on the bench. We don't know why. We'll check it out. Banazak hurdling in the end zone for the touchdown. Pete Banazak, who did not play hardly at all in preseason. A mere 73 yards rushing. Scores Oakland's first touchdown for 1975. Good offensive line in front of the Oakland Raiders. They protect well for Kenny Stabler. They block well for their running backs. Beeler and Upshaw, two excellent guards, along with Shell and Bella, two fine tackles. Now, George Blanda has just set a new NFL record. He's playing in 211th consecutive game, and he is attempting to kick his 1,920th point, which he does. The grand old man of the Oakland Raiders, 48 years old, puts the Raiders out in front with the conversion of 7 to nothing. We'll be back. This moment is devoted to all the grandmas in the world. The women with more love than you can hold in your arms at one time. And to the little people who make the regal title of grandma all possible. with your children just across town, you're lucky. But if your special friend is across the country, you're still only half a day away when you fly the Boeing 747. Go. Get together sometime soon. There's a reception committee that believes you're the most important passenger on that plane. Grandma! Boeing. Getting people together. The Mayflower hovering over the Orange Bowl, a jam-packed Orange Bowl here in Miami, Florida. As you see, the Oakland Raiders used up five minutes and two seconds in their scoring drive. Ray Guy sets the kickoff. He'll kick deep to Freddie Solomon, 86, and Mercury Morris, 22. Guy hits the ball and bobbled by Solomon. Solomon picks it up at the three. USC. All right, let's have another look at that touchdown play. Stabler handing off and in for the score. No problem. They've been chewing up on the rush, the two young ones I talked about, Crowder and Reese. And they're going to have to block that hole to stem the ground game. Banazak, the veteran whom we discussed earlier, going in for the score. Ball just short of the 12-yard line. Miami takes over once again. Reese at quarterback. 22, Nottingham, 36 to set back. Twilly coming towards you in motion. Nottingham over the left side, he slips. Understandably so, we had a downpour just before the start of the game, and this field is one that does get a little slippery. Well, just to recap, for anybody who might just be tuning in, Frank, the Oakland Raiders got off early when Miami fumbled in its own territory. Oakland recovered, went 38 yards in 10 plays, elapsed time of the drive, 5.02. They converted three big third down plays into first downs, won a 17-yard stapler pass. Nottingham, that's one yard, second down and nine. Well, at the bottom of 
your screen. Kutchenberg with a fine block out in front of Mercury Morris, who gets eight yards. It'll be third down, a long one. The ball's just over the 20. Here he is, former Notre Dame player. Bob Kutchenberg in there with Larry Little to give the Miami Dolphins two of the fine guards in the game. Now, Norm Bulash has come in at fullback for the Big Dolphins. Boo. Number 31, he's in there with the Miami Dolphins, other tight end, Andre Tillman. Standard procedure for most pro football teams on third and short guarding. Bullosh. Bullosh with the second effort. Moves out to the just short of the 24-yard line. It'll be a first down for Miami. Here he is, the much-traveled Norm Bulosh, I guess you could say, originally drafted by Don Shula as he comes out of the lineup now, and back goes Nottingham. Now he stays in. Wasn't quite sure whether he belonged there or not. They've been shuffling these running backs around. They have six of them they like to play. Five of them gained over 200 yards in three seasons. Hello, Nottingham, Bullish, and Morris. On the first down. And the pass intended out there for Twilly, doing a fine job defensively, was number 24, Willie Brown. Took his one shot. He and really bumped Twilly. It, yeah, Remember in our opening game a year ago, that thriller in which Buffalo beat Oakland 21 to 20 on the late pass in the final seconds by Ferguson to Ahmad Rashad? It looked to us then that Willie Brown might be at the end of the trail, but the real story turned out to be that at an advanced age, he had missed much of training because of the strike. It took him longer to get in shape. He's back and effective. Second down, the ball short of the 24-yard line of Miami. They trail 7 nothing. 4.45 remaining in the first quarter. Here comes an open rush. Greasy gets it off, intended for Mandich. Good defensive play by number 43, George Atkinson and Monty Johnson dropping back for middle linebacker. That's the ticket, Giffer. Monty Johnson has become a first-rate middle linebacker, a defensive lineman you'll remember at Nebraska, Frank. They quickly converted him to the linebacker position, and he is doing a fine job in the middle linebacker position. Dan Conn is another of those victimized by the 43-man rule. You all remember the splendid number 55 through all of the years with the Oakland Raiders, Dan Conn. No longer here. The Raiders put in their number one draft pick, the All-American from Ohio State, on the preventative hint, number 45, Neil Colsey. Five man defensive secretary on third, down and ten. Crazy in trouble with Tony Klein, who recovered the fumble that led to Oakland's first touchdown. And Miami having multiple problems moving the ball against the Oakland Raiders. Tony Klein is not the biggest guy in football, but he's quick, and uh, that's really what the front four Oakland is. They're quick. They're not very strong and not very heavy, but they're very quick to the pass rush. And of course, Klein comes in, takes an inside release, and gets Greasy, who can't really scramble too well. He's got to lay back in the pocket and have a little time to throw the ball. Larry Seipel drops the punt for Miami, kicking to a dangerous man. The youngster I spoke of a moment ago, number 45, Neil Colsey. The All-American from Ohio State, and he did everything for the Buckeyes. Played in the Rose Bowl three consecutive years, and Seifel has to hurry it. It goes end over end. Colsey without the fair catch. Colsey inside the 40 of Miami to the 39-yard line. Hit there by Mike Colin of Miami. Four minutes remaining in the first quarter. The Raiders seven, Miami nothing. Homelight makes more chainsaws for professionals than any other company in America. Homelight sells more chainsaws to farmers. Homelight made cutting easier for homeowners by introducing the only two-trigger chainsaw. And Homelight has the most servicing dealers. Everybody gives you reasons to buy their chainsaw. Homelight just gives you better ones. Homelight, for the pro and the man who wants to cut like one. Have you insulated your attic yet? Every day you wait, it's money through the roof. 
Insulate now with Owens Corning Fiberglass, six inches or more. Depending on where you live, you could save from $50 to $200 a year on heating and air conditioning with an average attic. Already have a little insulation? Ask your building supply dealer or fiberglass insulation contractor how much you could save by adding more. Every day you wait, it's money through the roof. Some 80,000 fans jammed in the Orange Bowl in Miami. They came expecting to see their pets, their favorites, the five-time playoff Miami Dolphins. And right now, the Oakland Raiders are dominating with four minutes remaining in the first quarter. Frank Gifford along with Howard Cosell and Alex Karras. There's the man that has led the Oakland Raiders in their one touchdown drive that took five minutes to play, capped off by Pete Banizak driving in from the two-yard line, set up by a fumble recovery by Tony Klein. And once again, Oakland in good field position after forcing a 14-yard drop by Greasy. It's on first down, and the ball goes to Harold Hart, the second-year man out of Texas Southern. He gets five yards. What Miami needs here is a break, a turnover, unless this game begins to get out of hand early. The Oakland team is a powerhouse, popularly felt to be perhaps the strongest team in the National Football League in terms of pure personnel. Pittsburgh adherents would argue with that, of course, but Miami just can't afford to give up another touchdown to the Raiders. Second down and six. The ball just short of the 35-yard line. out of bounds at the 27 yard line another Oakland Raider first down Marv Hubbard who went out for a few minutes in the first quarter we thought perhaps he was shaken up back in the lineup you see him shaking his right arm his right shoulder seemingly all right if that run is any indication Miami's only been going with the three men on a defensive line and now they put in the fourth one right now I don't know what the, what their thinking was on that but uh, they finally got it back into a four-man situation in front receivers on the first down move out to the right for Kenny Stabler of the Oakland Raiders and Timolevikov coming back to the weak side getting the call is Harold Hart Hart gets a couple of yards taken out of bounds by Mike Golan and we talked about the youngsters in the middle of that defensive unit for the Miami Dolphins but Mike Golan has quite a burden that middle linebacker he has been a steady performer a strong performer on the outside but the middle spot is new and anyone who's ever been in that spot knows that it takes a special kind of knack to play that position not only that Giff, he openly says that he doesn't like playing that position he is of course the hardest hitter by repute on the miami team all right the ball is marked just inside the 28. second down 10. Raiders. Such are the dispositions and loyalties of the fans. And 
certainly circumscribed around Gerald Irons on that particular play. That's right. The linebackers for Oakland, by the way, are 86, Gerald Irons, 58, Monty Johnson, 41, Phil Villapiano out of Bowling Green, Ted Hendricks, number 83, probably sidelined all night with a full groin muscle. The recent acquisition and superb linebacker destined ultimately to replace Gerald Irons, who made that interception. On first down. Come back, a holding call going against Oakland. A gain of 18, nullified by a holding call. Ten yard mark off. Just to show you Oakland's domination, notwithstanding that penalty, Frank, Oakland has gotten the ball respectively on Miami's 38, 39, and 46 yard line. Always they've been in superb field position. Gene Upshaw, the left guard for Oakland, was caught holding. So Oakland now with the first down at their own 44-yard line. Out to the right goes Belitnikoff. To the left, Branch. Tight end is Bob Moore. The ball is hard, and getting in there quick was John Andrews. John Andrews, a much-traveled rookie, at least in the National League. Originally drafted by Detroit, as Howard mentioned earlier, played a couple of years up in Canada. So, Miami will bring out some of their bigger men. They'll insert number 41, Jarris White, into the secondary. He's back there along with Jake Scott. Also, Barry Hill, number 44, six defensive secondary men for Miami on second down. viewers to watch 44, the rookie defensive back from Iowa State. Another Miami, well, he's not really a sleeper in terms of the draft. He was picked within the top five. But an outstanding player who's desperately needed because of the absence of Dick Anderson. And by the way, Frank, as you know, Jake Scott is playing banged up tonight. He's hurt. Yes, he is. Jake Scott, with the operation offseason, injured his shoulder three weeks ago, but he's in there playing. To his Raiders, who have a third down and 20. Babler going over the head of Mike Ciani. And Oakland will have to turn the ball over to Miami. Oakland with a 7 to nothing lead. Yeah, they're getting a lot of protection, Stabler. He's just been off target right now, but the, that won't last all game, that's for sure. He'll come back. will punt for Oakland. Superb athlete Ray Gry. Draft number one draft choice in 73. He'll kick deep to Freddie Solomon, 86. Here's Freddie. Solomon, second round draft pick for Miami out of Tampa this year. Was a running quarterback. And what a fine running quarterback he was. Guy puts the foot to this one. Solomon feels it at his 12. Good return by the rookie from Tampa. All the way out to the 32-yard line. He took a chance at the 12, and it paid off. 22-yard return. We'll be back in the Orange Bowl after this. Ford Motor Company announces a dramatic increase in its average gas mileage rating for 1976 cars over 1975. Based on estimated EPA sales-weighted figures, we project an average rating increase of 27% an increase of 27 percent in just one year. Of course, some individual gains were not as dramatic as this average since their big improvements were made in 1975 models, like our MPG cars introduced in June. Remember, these results are estimates based on EPA's combined city highway test, so the actual mileage you get may be different. 
But this impressive gain in our mileage rating has been accomplished without sacrificing the strength, the riding comfort, or safety features you expect in cars from Ford Motor Company. See our family of cars with a 27% average mileage rating gain at your Ford and Lincoln Mercury dealers October 3rd. Let's have another look at that kick just returned by Freddie Solomon as we broke. That's a gutsy return. Taking the ball on the run, moving up to take it, and then slipping through and moving the ball back 22 yards. Haven't seen that kind of return since Albie Booth pulled it off for Yale against the Catfish Smith Georgia team in the early 30s. It was 31, wasn't it? I remember that. First and 10 for Miami. to the 37-yard line, and Norm Boulash, along with Benny Malone, and Don Nottingham, and Mercury Morris, had tremendous three seasons rushing. It was the best rushing year the Dolphins have ever had. And there is a good look at him. He came up in 1970, drafted number one by Don Shulin when he was with Baltimore. And into Philadelphia. He had a problem with concussions last year. Second down and four. To 37. Morris. Morris is three yards, goes out to the 40. It'll be third down, two yards for Miami. I'd like to see Mercury Morris have a great season this year, and I'll tell you the reason why. You know, he's been behind two of the greatest ball players and didn't get to play as much as he'd like to. He knows the pressure's on this year. He was a competitor. behind kick. Kick got mad because he was behind Mercury. Yeah, but they switch back and forth an awful lot, Howard, and I think he knows that he has to control the game for Miami now, and he's going to do a job. Looking at Otis Armstrong, number 24, Denver Broncos, rushed for 1,407 yards a year ago, led the NFL, had over 2,000 personally on total offense when you include his pass reception. A remarkable player from Purdue. You'll see him next Monday night against the Green Bay Packers. And for Bob Greasy, a third down, gambling, long pass attempt, backfire. The Miami Dolphins trailing the Raiders 7 to nothing as we begin the second quarter. We'll punt. There's Marv Hubbard, shaken up in the first quarter. His replacement, Pete Banaszak, went in for the Oakland touchdown. But Marv Hubbard is the man they like to get through the ball in the short situations. Okay, this is Larry Seipel. Single safety, Neil Colsey. Colsey at his own 24. And 
Colsey goes down as he goes over the 35. Slipping gets all up, over the place. And gets yep. out to the 39-yard line, a gain of 13. Andre Tillman hustling down there for Miami. Neil Colsey, and what a great career he had at Ohio State. The number one draft pick, three times, three consecutive years in the Orange Bowl, rather the Rose Bowl. And a fine all-star game, too. As a matter of fact, two defensive back rookies on Oakland figure to be outstanding in the future. Colsey from Ohio State and Phillips from your alma mater, USC. Minus 21 yards passing for Miami. You don't win football games that way. And Miami trails 7 to nothing. Ball just short of the 39 as Oakland takes possession. Marv Hubbard back in the lineup over the left side, getting yardage up to the 45-yard line, a gain of six. In line with the conversation we had, Alex, during the preseason, Marv Hubbard asked me to tell you today that any team of 11 guys playing today could beat any team of 11 guys playing 10 years ago. How about in a fist fight? <laughs> That we didn't discuss because you were never noted for your pugilistic ability. <laughs> Second down and four. The ball just short of the 45-yard line. Harold Hart over the left side. This time he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Picks up a yard, maybe a yard and a half. Hit there by Mike Colon. Number 57 and Don Reese, number 76. Remember that Harold Hart was the rookie surprise of a year ago. 11th round draft choice out of Southern University. He's seeing frontline duty tonight because of a muscle pull that's been hampering Clarence Davis, number 28. There's Neil Colsey at 15 interceptions at Ohio State. Change in his shoes. We told you the poly turf here at the Orange Bowl gets slippery when it gets wet. And we had a downpour just prior to the start of the game. Third down, three. The ball just over the 45 for Oakland. Stabler, Hubbard, wide open over the middle. First down inside the 40 of Miami. Marv Hubbard hit there by Mike Cullen. And somehow or other, Kenny Stabler is victimizing a Miami defensive unit. And one would suspect that it might be a problem of Mike Cullen at middle linebacker. When you see a back come out of there, it's usually a linebacker that's supposed to pick him up, and right now they're just coming out of there at will and catching the ball. The first down is just short of the 38-yard line. Out to the left goes Cliff Branch. Out to the right is Politnikoff, and Pete Banizak is back in with Jeff Phillips on the 35, Banizak at 40. Here's Banizak. Big hole, and Banizak spins and twists inside the 30-yard line. Once again, they're ripping through that young middle of the Miami defensive line. They are definitely feeling the absence of Manny Fernandez and Bob Hines. Well, you can see Randy Crowder, 74. He's a tough young kid, and he's going to be a good one. But right now, they're pushing him down the line, and they're taking advantage of that middle, as Howard pointed out. And uh, big, big holes are being open. Here's Colin right here. He's sitting in pretty good. And now he's getting blocked off pretty good by the center in there. Center's doing a good job. The new center for the uh, Jim Langer's doing a fine job. Well, Jim Otto said today he's been working with Excuse Dave me, Dalby for the uh, past three years now, and he says he's a quick learner, and he says he's going to fill the job admin. There was a gain of nine by Banizak. Second down, less than a yard for Oakland. Stabler. Wide open, tight end, Dave Casper. And Oakland continues to move a gain of 15 as the second year man Dave Casper from Notre Dame comes up with a key catch for Oakland you know you look back two years it used to be suicide to pass against this Miami team and you know the way this Miami team was coordinated the defensive unit it became famous as the no-name defense the man who molded it of course it's an old story Bill Onsbach who is now doing a superb coaching job with the Giants I think they still miss him down here. First and 10 at the 13-yard line. Stayed there with a lot of time. Dumps it off to Banizak. And he has a lot of running room. Banizak all the way down to the five-yard line. Hit there finally by Doug Swift. I know what Ola Sistrunk, number 60, right there on your camera saying right now. He's saying easy money. He hasn't played over two minutes, I don't think. And as you can see, too, it's hot. I like to, like to see Oakland play ball possession. Only about 80 degrees, 79 at kickoff, but it is humid. Showers off and on during the course of the day. 
Heat is one of the things that's helped the Dolphins with their great winning record in this ballpark in the past. As you know, Frank, many teams fade about the fourth quarter again. On second down and three. Arm Hubbard pulls over the right side. You know, you're talking about the heat situation, and, and when uh, Shula got over here to, uh, and started taking over the uh, coaching reins here, he made his ball players go out four times a day in this kind of heat, and that really got them in good shape. And they weren't the best the football team the first year he had them, but they were sure, certainly in good shape, and they took advantage of this kind of weather down here. There he is, Don Shula. What a great coaching record he has. The youngest ever to win 100 games. You see how much... Oakland has to make to pick up the first down. It'll be third down, as you see, less than a yard. Can you imagine practicing four times a day, Frank? That's what they did, you know. No, that called for early retirement. Eleven oh nine remaining in the first half. The Oakland Raiders have dominated. However, they lead by only seven. Manizak going over from the two-yard line. Kenny Stabler looking over the Miami defense at a third down and less than a yard. Manizak and Manizak as he scored the touchdown, hurdles over the defense, stopped there by Jake Scott at the two-yard line. Pete Manizak, six feet, 210, been around for 10 years. He's here, as Howard mentioned earlier, because he can do a lot of things for Oakland. And continuing to grind. A big play for them in the first quarter was a fumble recovery. The fumble by Nottingham of Miami. Tony Klein was right there. Five minutes later, they were in the end zone. Pete Banizak scoring from two yards out. They lead 7-0. Banizak. Bigger than he looks. You saw his power. John Andrews is over 250, 6'6". Banizak just lifted him up and took him with him. He's doing a good job out there. Schuler ob obviously fretting as you look at Don in the picture. Banizak's doing a well of a job. Hubbard went out. Looked like he might have hurt his shoulder, Frank. He was shaking his arm, but he came back after he appeared to hurt it the first time. Okay, it's second down. Banizak, no question this time. Banizak with his second touchdown on the night. And Oakland moves out in front of the Miami Dolphins, 13 to nothing. And there's Marv Hubbard getting some treatment on the sidelines, but appears to be an injured shoulder. So what a loss that would be. Tim Foley coming to the sidelines for Miami. A lap time, Oakland went 61 yards, 10 plays, a lap time of drive, 523. And Miami is in danger of having this game get out of hand. 48-year-old George Blanda, every time he does anything on a football field, it's a record. And at this point, he extends Oakland's lead to 14 to nothing over Miami. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Joe Namath. Stevie's eating a burger I cooked in 60 seconds with the new Little Mac by Hamilton Beach. Little Mac not only cooks burgers fast, but also makes cheese or ham sandwiches, apple turnovers, anything you can put between two slices of bread. And only Little Mac flips its grid. Round for burgers, square for sandwiches. The Little Mac 60-second burger machine. It's the best thing from Hamilton Beach since the butter-up popper. If you're like millions of Americans, you'd rather play golf than eat and do anything to improve your game. This could do it. Move out to Ben Hogan's Producers. Any clubs with Ben Hogan's name on them have the precision, design, and quality that give you confidence. That's why AMF puts its name on the line, too. And that name adds even more value to sports products like Ben Hogan Bowls and Clubs. AMF brings out the best in you. The Oakland Raiders out in front of the Miami Dolphins, 14 to nothing. The Raiders, a perennial bridesmaid of pro football. They always get to the playoffs. That's almost a foregone conclusion when the season begins. The 
but then something seems to go wrong in the playoffs. Ray Guy kicking off for Oakland. And puts his foot into this one, deep into the end zone. Freddie Solomon, very wisely, takes the ball and takes the touchback. And what a foot he's got. 14 to nothing, Oakland. The architect of the offense, there's a flag down, I believe. The architect of the offense, clearly Kenny Stabler, both with, both with his passing and his play calling. He's been the chief executor of the offense, though nobly abetted, because in his six pass completions in the game thus far, each one has been to a different receiver. He knows how to use his people. They're discussing the penalty gift. Why don't you get down to be and straighten them out? <laughs> holding against the Miami Dolphins, and the flag is way up at the 42-yard line of Oakland. Jim Tunney discussing it with his crew of officials. I got a big kick out of the defensive captain there right now. As you see, he's talking to the referee, but really when he makes up his mind, he's going to look over to the coach, and the coach will tell him what to do. Kind of a formal thing they go through. Holding against Miami. Declined. Bruce Ilya. The rookie linebacker for Miami was spot holding, and Miami prefers the touchback. This is Gracie, and this is Mercury Morris, and running into a lot of trouble, Mercury Morris. In there, from his middle linebacker spot, Monty Johnson. Uh, generating no ground game at all, the Miami Dolphins. Let's take a look at that last touchdown. Pete Banizak, good blocking, a hold goes in easily. The head down, its own battering ram, Alex. They're just driving it home. You see the offensive lineman just knocking the defensive lineman apart, and the fullbacks are going in with the head down, and it's just basic football right there, folks, right there on the goal line. Loss of four by Mercury Moore, second down and 14. The ball at the... 16-yard line. Greasy back and looking. Greasy will go down. Horace Jones, number 82, from defensive end. All over Bob Greasy. And the Bluebirds begin to vocalize once again. Well, we're talking about uh, one of the weaknesses the Oakland Raiders have, and I think it's because their defensive line is a little light. And if you can take the ball to them on running and, and control the ball game that way, you can beat Oakland. But if you, go, if you get behind and enable that uh, defensive lineman just to, to rush that passer and not worry about the run, then it's going to be a big, big, long night. And you can see right now that's exactly what's happening. They're really pouring in on the quarterback. And too, Alex, they are not a team that makes mistakes. Your head coach John Madden and Al Davis do not tolerate mistakes. Third down at 21. Goulash. Tying the right side. Goulash picks up about four yards. I'm he needed 21. I'm surprised, Alex, by the inability to generate a ground game on the part of Miami because the one thing that's been untouched in this whole Miami superstructure has been the offensive line. It remains a superb unit. You don't have better pulling running guards than 66 Little, 67 Kuchenberg. You can't get a better guy than 73 Norm Evans. And yet they haven't been able to move the ball against Oakland on the ground, and Oakland was very weak in defensing the rush last year. That statistic translated. Raiders 14, Miami nothing. Cycle puts the foot to it. Back deep, Neil Colsey, and he takes it on the fly and immediately is nailed at the 40-yard line. Down there, the center, Jim Langer, number 62. A 33-yard punt, a six-yard return. 7.28, remaining in the first half. A game dominated by Oakland. Oakland out in front of Miami, 14 to nothing. We'll be back in the Orange Bowl in just a moment. Someday, about 2,200 pounds from now and half a dozen feet taller, this little fella might follow the footsteps of his father, a member of the Big Hitch, the team of champion Clydesdale that symbolized the King of Beers. Symbolize a tradition, a promise, a dedication that can be summed up in one word, pride. Maybe that's why, when you say Budweiser, you've said it all. Five cars. Five.
five dead batteries. But we're going to start all five with one battery, a two-year-old Sears Die Hard. The Sears Die Hard. It lives up to its name. Sold only at Sears. 28 remaining in the first half at the Orange Bowl. As you see, the Raiders out in front of Miami, 14 to nothing. And this program is being brought to you as a special exclusive of ABC Sports. Right now, let's pause five seconds and allow our local stations to identify themselves. Manny Fernandez, sidelined, one of the great tackles for Miami over the years. Out with an injured ankle. One first and ten. Oakland gives the ball to Banizak. He turns the corner, has running room. And Oakland chewing up the Miami defense as Banizak goes down to the 26-yard line, a gain of 14. And the guy they turned the corner on there, Doug Swift, the gentleman from Amherst. Miami has another problem that seems obvious at this point, Giff. In trying to get back in the ball game, they don't have the Warfield type who can break open that game for you or can get you back in so quickly because of the big play. Mark Van Egan comes in for Oakland, second-year man out of Colgate. He's in there, number 40. Another number 34, Harold Hart, and Harold Hart spins away from a tackle by Charlie Babb, and now a flag goes down. near man there's the clipping there's the foul indicated against Miami two second year running backs in there now for Oakland and now Jeff Phillips come in Jeff Phillips acquired from New Orleans by the Oakland Raiders that's the story it has been all Oakland they capitalized on a fumble by Nottingham of Miami went in to score a two-yard touchdown by Manizak have been in complete control of the game. Banizak scored just a few moments ago, again from one yard out. And John Madden has to be happy with what he's seeing this evening. While his counterpart, Don Shula, must be wondering what's ahead. First and ten. Ball at the 14 yard line. is down, however. Jess Phillips, he was acquired from New Orleans. It was suspected he had a bad knee. He showed up and became the outstanding rusher for Oakland during the preseason. As you see, the holding call against Oakland, that one will come back. Hubbard, we have been told, has a dislocated shoulder. He's out for the rest of the game. And much more than that, one would suspect. Marv Hubbard with a dislocated shoulder gained nearly 900 yards over the past four years. Bro. And you know, it's it's really funny, but Steve Toll, number 56, is a young, inexperienced ball player, and he's bumping into his lineman right there, and he just runs right past the dog on Jess Phillips, and Jess Phillips, to me, Frank, uh, is, a, is an acquisition that they picked up that's really going to help this team, and you say Hubbard's out with the shoulder, Jess Phillips will come in, and he's a tough, tough runner. I've never really understood why he was moved around so much. Michigan State University, a lot of personal troubles, then in with Paul Brown, then down into Five remaining in the first half. It'll be first down and 20. The ball just inside the 25. That's Mike Colon. He has been replaced by Toll, whom you saw a moment ago. They're taking his blood pressure. Notice Frank on the right arm. It's a very warm night. We wouldn't even hazard a guess as to what could be wrong with Mike Colon, but it is warm. It's very humid. On first down for Oakland. Banazak. and he's all the way down to the 11-yard line. Finally dropped by Charlie Babb. 14-yard pickup by Banizak, who's having some night. Well, well, Don Shula has to be in absolute anguish. A number of times tonight, we've seen that very thing happen. The Oakland are back with the ball, trapped behind the line of scrimmage. Easy prey for a tackler. The clean tackle's not forthcoming. And the Oakland runners breaking into quick daylight. This is not anything like the Miami team we were accustomed to the last five years. Not up to this point, anyway. 
Lewis Carter, still another back for Oakland is in there, but he slips and goes down, does the rookie from Maryland. Not the only setback the Raiders have had thus far. Manizak now has piled up 45 yards and eight carries. Two of those carries resulting in touchdowns. Of course, the play before this one, you'll see Toll again, number 56, going and really overrunning this play again. He goes right to the right side. And what he has to do, really, is he has to hang in there a little bit more. He's, he's got to play a little bit more in the middle, and he isn't. And, of course, this gives a natural hole. And here we go again. There's Vanacek. Steve Toll, the rookie from Kansas. The Miami Dolphins are very high on this youngster, but he is seeing a lot of different things tonight than he saw in preseason for the Raiders. Third down and six. Ball just inside the 11. Yes, Phillips. And Phillips high steps it down to the six-yard line. Finally stopped there by Bob Matheson. He's a tough, tough runner, boy, I'll tell you. We used to try and tackle him down there when he played with New Orleans, and you can bring him down, but boy, I'll tell you, you knew in your ball game when you played against him. He's a tough runner. Still before he got his momentum underway, 74, Randy Crowder had a good, clean shot at him and didn't execute the tackle, taking nothing away from Phillips. It's fourth down. That means the ancient one, only in chronological age, because George Landon is still a youngster, will attempt 25 yards out. And for him, that's almost automatic. Raiders extending their lead over Miami. Open 17, the Miami Dolphins nothing. Four minutes, 54 seconds remaining in the first half. Now, developed from the same aramid fibers used in space, Goodyear brings you a revolutionary tire cord. Flex 10, extremely flexible, high tensile strength, pound for pound, five times stronger than steel. Of course, any tire cord is only one of the many factors that contribute to a tire's performance. Goodyear tested a wide variety of tires with Flex 10 cord for half a billion miles. Flex 10, here now in the belts of soft riding tires for luxury cars. The Goodyear Double Eagle, Flex 10, soon in the belts of performance tires for lightweight and toughness. Flex 10, adding its strength to the heavy duty tires of trucks and off the road equipment. And now found in a new winter radial with no metal studs. Flex 10 is here. Pound for pound, five times stronger than steel, and only from Goodyear. Ray Guy will set it up at the 35-yard line. The Oakland Raiders have extended their lead to 17 to nothing over Miami. A 25-yard field goal by George Blanda. A couple of inside the five touchdown shots by Pete Banizak. That's been the scoring, but it's been a game totally dominated by Oakland. Deep, Freddie Solomon, 86, Mercury Morris, 22. Miami needs more than anything is one big break and you look out on the field and you wonder who will give it to them Solomon from the one out over the 25 to the 26 hit down there by Warren Baxton the captain of the special teams for Oakland I think Miami needs about four big breaks yeah, well, I'll tell you something, Howard. I'm not giving you any more cigars. Frank, don't let him have any more of my cigars. His people did not get in touch with my people yet. I'm still not on his show. Alex, you are on the show Saturday night. I know that. Really and truly, Howard? I didn't I'm want you to break the news to him. He's been specially requested. Well, we'll get to the rest of the live Saturday night with Howard Cosell in a moment. But right now, the Miami Dolphins, trailing 17 to nothing, moving from their own 26, fully in motion. Greasy goes to Mandich, and you see something that doesn't often happen. Jim Mandich does not hold on to the football. That's true, and what you saw then was good protection for Greasy. That time, he had all the time in the world to throw. Of course, it was a running down, and of course, the linemen, you know, are not going to be more apt to rush the pass passer in the first down situation. Greasy knows that. He's trying to do something about it. That's a good play. He's 0 for 4 at the moment, is Bob Greasy. 36 remaining in the first half second down the ball at the 26 out to the left comes Twilly he'll tie up there with the veteran Willie Brown up to the right Nate Moore up on his head top of your screen Skip Thomas and getting the call is Goulash and Goulash oh. gets a 
a couple of yards, but it puts Greasy back in a passing situation, and he has already been sacked several times tonight. You talk about lineback play, Alex. Did you see Bill Villapiano close that gap? He's a tough guy, and he's not a very big guy, but he's quick as the Dickens, and he can make a good get right to the middle of that field or to the outside of that field. He's good on the pass. He's active. One he's of the most very, active, very active guys in the league. That's That was the hallmark of your old Detroit Lions with Numoff and Lucci and Wayne Walker. That's right. They very, very quick. Larry Seipel is in the ball game for Miami. A setback number 20. He's a good receiver. That's why he's there. Third down and nine. Greasy has Quilly all along. Howard Quilly. First down for Miami at the 40-yard line of Oakland. A 33-yard completion. And either Quilly put on a tremendous move against he Willie Brown. Hurt. Boy, and Quilly has been shaken up. That smacks a great deal like a possible concussion. That's all Miami needs. Shula hasn't had enough. In that vein, Frank, I had to wonder why Don traded to New Orleans for a future draft choice as Quilly comes out of the game shaken up, obviously, at the very least. Melvin Baker, the bright prospect from Southern of a year ago. I guess it was because he kept get, getting hurt. Take a look at that again. Twilly's off the field now under his own power, walking on the sidelines. He was shaking up this moment, Charlie. And as I suspected, you saw a couple of Raiders slip. That's the third Raider that went down on a very slippery turn. Horace Owens, number 82, replaces Twilly. First and 10 for Miami. They're at the 41-yard line of Oakland. Let's remark. Trending to the outside. Gets about three yards after covering about 30. Taken out of bounds there by Skip Thomas. It'll be second down and seven. Clock moving. Three minutes. Now stop with the out of bounds at 3.01 remaining in the first half. We told you it was warm. I believe that's Mike Colon. Now here's Twilly. We saw Colon a while ago having his blood pressure taken. Now we have Twilly sucking on oxygen. Very sticky night in Miami. Second down and six. All at the 38-yard line of Oakland. Out of the flat and Jim managed. Held on that time. He slammed the ball down in disgust. He had to be very careful of the footing. Take a chance, he might have tacked on additional yardage, but he gets the first down at the 29 yard line. In the long run, the mark of the great quarterback might be patience, the real mark, and that's what Greasy has to be here. Miami is too stable a team, too well coached a team to panic, even if 17 points behind. So Greasy will take the short yardage and not try to go for everything at once. Might not panic, are you sure? Can believe he's a little nervous. Gulash over the right side, finds the hole, good for six yards, and now flag is down. There's the foul, base guard, oh, against Oakland. Look at it again and see if you can pick it up. There's Gulash, right there was. Phil Filipiano. Yep. And Phil, he gets a little active out there. He's not one of the biggest people around, and he figures he should be able to do a few things he shouldn't. Here's Otis being two-timed in there. It takes a little inside rush, and they go right through him on that one. Come on, Otis. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Miami moving now. They have a first down. They're inside the 19-yard line of Oakland. There's the story in terms of time. 2.50 remaining in the first half. Miami did not have last year that they had in the previous years. They would hope it, that 
he would return to his form of 72 and 73, and he looks like he may have. Mercury Morris, a great speedster. Doing this really on his own as he moves to the outside. Atkinson totally mistimed his tackle, but Willie Brown is there to save the touchdown. Now they mark it just short of the six-yard line. The two tight ends are in. Jim Manage, 88. five-yard line. Now Nottingham trots out onto the field. Morris will depart. Yeah, the little butter ball's in there now. They must have this touchdown to stay in this ball game. Clock moving, moving towards the two-minute warning. They should be able to get this playoff. receiver as head coach Don Chula looks on. He knows how desperately Miami needs a touchdown. Special blow. I don't know whether we got inside the two-minute warning or there was contact made. Clock indicates 158. But there also was movement at the line of scrimmage. Two-minute warning. With two minutes remaining in the first half, Miami will have a second down on the four-yard line of Oakland. They trail 17 to nothing. We'll be back. And as you retire, Joe, carry this gold watch with you. To this year, Joe's now. retiring, not you. But when you do retire, you'll need more than a watch. You'll need money. So find out if you qualify for the new individual retirement savings plan at your savings and loan. The new income tax laws make this plan very profitable. Stop by at your savings and loan and ask about their individual retirement savings account. That watch is running. Naralco, yes sir, this is my coffee maker. Makes up to 12 cups automatically and perfect every time. I love it. And consumer testing magazines liked it too. Hey look, I know you can spend less for a coffee maker. <laughs> you could spend more too. But I don't care what you pay. You can't buy a finer one. Mm. Take a tip from Danny Boy. If you compare like I did, you will buy a Norelco coffee maker. A critical moment as we look from the Goodyear blimp Mayflower at a jam-packed Orange Bowl. The Miami Dolphins have been practically run out of the stadium. They trail the Oakland Raiders 17 to nothing. However, they have a second down at the four-yard line of the Raiders. Can they get it in? They'll be right back in the football game. John Madden looking on. His counterpart, Don Chula. The coaches, two coaches with great coaching records. Chula, quite understandably apprehensive. The Dolphins have been shoved all over the field, and yet they are right back in the game. Should they be able to get this in from the four? Bulash and Nottingham are the two big setbacks. Greasy wants it to go to the air. Goes to Nat Moore. Good coverage out there by Skip Thomas. Skip Thomas, who has turned into an outstanding defensive cornerback for Oakland. There's Marv Hubbard. With a big ice pack on that left shoulder. And he must be some tough cookie if you've ever had a injured shoulder, you know that it may is not, really painful. May not be separated, Frank. Might be just a deep bruise. On third down.
immediate transition in emotion takes place in this ballpark of any ballpark, I think, in the National Football League. The cheers, the joy, the jubilation being registered now vis-a-vis -vis the instant vocal disapproval, the booze whenever anything goes wrong. Garo Yapremian will kick. Earl Marl will hold. Miami moving 74 yards in 10 plays. The big one, the pass to Twilly from Greasy. And Miami makes it a football game with 148 remaining in the first half. over Miami, 17 to 7. And Miami looking a little more like the Miami that we are so familiar with on that 74-yard drive. Let's look at it again. It's just a sprint to the corner by the speedster Mercury Morris. And Mercury Morris, who had those great seasons in 72 and 73, 1,000 yards in 72, 954 in 73, here with multiple injury problems able to gain only 214 but he does appear to be back here it is again uh, 148 remaining in the first half by the way plenty of time for Oakland Kenny Stabler noted for being able to move the football with little time the premium will kick to either Hart or Phillips there by Ernest Arone. You know, you get a sense of unending power, even though they've just been scored on with this Oakland team, Alex. There seems to be so much personnel. Don't you get that feeling? Well, that's, that's the, the darn good thing about the Oakland Raiders. they got this great depth, such great confidence in what they can do, and they'll just come back now and try to eat up the time and go in for a touchdown. They don't get too concerned. They don't get too panicked. Freddie Solomon, I'm told, Frank, has a dislocated big toe, which has to be a source of major worry. First down at the 36. Arch is in motion. Manizak, who has been the chief man in the Raiders running game tonight, moves for eight yards out to the 44-yard line as Bob Matheson makes a stop, but... Miami has not been able to control the middle. We told you over and over about the two youngsters who are in there, Don Reese and Randy Crowder. Well, Gene and Upshaw, now they also have a rookie middle linebacker. Excuse me. Gene Upshaw and Dave Dalby and George Bueller and John Bella and Art Shaw are doing a terrific job. And what they're doing to that defensive line is they're sending them right up on their toes and knocking them back into their linebackers. And linebackers cannot move around unless their defensive line at least penetrates or at least holds the line of scrimmage. Mark Van Egan. Second-year man out of Colgate moves into Miami territory, and Oakland will take time out with 51 seconds remaining in the first half. Now, if you can watch the middle linebacker, he's going to—he shouldn't let the uh, center get to him. Cole's Dolby, Cole's, Dolby's getting tall, and he knocks him right back. He goes back and he turns his back on him. And of course, if you're a middle linebacker and you do that, you're, you're not going to last too much longer. I'll tell you that—you're going to have some bad knees and once in a while a bad back. Toll is getting an education, no question about it. It's a very sad thing, as I guess most of America knows by now, that our president was shot at today in San Francisco outside the St. Francis Hotel. At halftime, we're going to take you to our ABC studios in New York and the distinguished Mr. Harry Reisner who will give you an up-to-the-minute report. Fortunately, the president, perfectly fine, not hit. Conversation there on the sidelines between Kenny Stabler and his head coach, John Madden. Uh, Stabler back onto the field, 51 seconds remaining in the first half. He has two more timeouts. And 1974 Player of the Year, as you saw, was Kenny Stabler. Uh, what a great year it was for Kenny. 26 touchdown passes. the big man from the University of Mars. Alex's classic comment of a year ago in his very first effort on... I, I, was, kid, I was kidding, Otis. <laughs> Peace too, brother. <laughs> first down. Mark Van Egan, number 30, is the single setback. Stabler going deep. Picked off by Charlie Babb. And Babb gets his first interception of the season. The pass 
that's attempted for Branch. And I believe Tim Foley knocked off Branch as he came off the line of scrimmage, giving Babb an easy shot at the interception. But Charlie Babb, who's stepping into big shoes, the big shoes of Dick Anderson, who underwent knee surgery and is out for the season, gets his first interception. 41 seconds remaining in the half. What, what, what am I going to do on your show, Mark? We're going am to let, sing or what? We're going to let Gifford decide that since he broke the news as you watch this replay. Babb, by the way, made a fine over-the-shoulder catch. Frank, am I singing? Uh, San Diego, aren't you? He got you as far away from him as he could. <laughs> again. No, Alex, the hottest rock group in the country, the Eagles, are going to be on the show. Live from Balboa Stadium, San Diego. You're going to bring them on. Yeah, they're quite a group. All right, Bulash. Now, Bulash is going to go out of bounds. That's going to kill the clock with 34 seconds. And I'm sure that Miami was thinking more in terms of running it out. They're in an area where you don't like to gamble a whole lot particularly when you have just got yourself back into the football game, as Miami did, with a 74-yard touchdown drive. How'd you get friendly with the Eagles, Alec? Well, they're Detroit guys, and apparently they really love me, and I'm going to go out there, and maybe I'll swing with them. I might use an instrument and play with them, too. I don't know yet. They That's remember. my country, you know. I dig it out there. They remember when you were good. <laughs> Second down and six. what I'm sure Miami likes for him to do. <laughs> Banizak, resting casually on his helmet. And now Oakland calls timeout. They'll have one timeout, and they are going to, perhaps, barring a first down Miami, get another chance at the football. Third and four, and over to the sideline comes Bob Greasy. Right. Frank, I'm sorry, but who else is on the show? I want to know if I'm going to be all right on that show, Howard. Who else is on the show? A fella named John Wayne. No, I'll be a fella named Red Fox. A fella named Muhammad Ali, live from Manila. A fella named Joe Frazier, live from Manila. One of them could be something less than live, 48 hours after the show. And a lady who is, I think, one of the most remarkable people in the country named Barbara Walters. Wow. And a marvelous singing lady named Linda Runs. Well, I guess yeah, I'll... It's only going to be an hour. I guess I'll end up as the usher again this week. <laughs> you know, I, I'm really one of the nice people in the game of football is a guy named O.J. Simpson. I'm looking at a telegram which he sent to Howard. Thanks for a thoroughly enjoyable Saturday evening, O.J. The juice. And it must have really fired him up. Oh, no. He had a better Sunday yesterday. than he had a Saturday night. I'll tell you, 173 yards, two long runs called back. Could have broken his own record. It was Sunday live with O.J. <laughs> Miami has the oranges, but Buffalo got, got the, the juice. juice. 19 seconds remaining in the first half, and Miami will certainly try to get the first down because Oakland has one time out. They'll try and get at least a punt return. Third down and four. Norm Bullash, and quickly, Oakland uses their last timeout. And it's fourth down. Miami will punt. You know, this Saturday, ABC Sports brings you NCAA college football with four exciting regional games. North Carolina State at Michigan State. Illinois will be at Texas A&M, Maryland at Kentucky, and San Jose State at Stanford. NCAA Regional College Football this Saturday on ABC. Now you can check your local listings for the game that will be shown in your area. Larry Seipel comes out for Miami. 14 seconds remaining. Oakland with no more timeouts. They will probably go with everything they have in an attempt to block this punt. Seipel's certainly aware of that. He's a fine athlete. Keep in mind, the fair catch would kill the clock and give Oakland an opportunity for a field goal attempt from that spot. So he knows, too, he has to get off a good punt. And it's not bad. Colsey takes it at midfield. Colsey goes out of bounds. Six seconds now, five seconds, indicating on the clock, and Oakland has no more timeouts. 36-yard punt, 11-yard return. Seconds. Oakland has one play. They lead 17 to 7. A 
pretty good lead to take to the locker room. Of course, Miami has shortened that lead with that fine drive and wound up with their lone touchdown. Speaking of those games, you'll be seeing coming up, Stanford, of course, had a big game against Michigan over the weekend. Getting that tie in the last few seconds. Stanford, always tough.